guest today has many hats both on and off the stage. Uh, if you're familiar with Chapel Street Players in Newark, he is the president of Chapel Street Players, the owner of his own production company called Effervescent, and most importantly for right now, is the, he's the Delaware actor making the unique achievement of playing the same role for, get this, 30 years. Please welcome Scott Mason. Scott, thanks for joining us. Thank you. So we have to start off with that. No one that I know of or even heard of has played, not even has only been in the same production, but played the same role for 30 years. First of all, what is the role and where is it? So 30 years playing the character of Joss Meyer in the classic, the Nutcracker, Nutcracker. In LA. And it's with Delaware Dance Company out of Newark, Delaware. This is their 38th production show. Uh, we even did it last year with Wall Street Blitz because of COVID. Um, and this is my 36th year with the show, and my 30th again playing Joshua. So you've only missed a couple of years out of the whole thing. I missed the first year, and then I had to take a year off for grad school. But other than that, Thanks. never missed the show. So with you being, you know, in within that role for 30 years, I would imagine you have seen a lot of people come and go in the various roles. Is there like alumni? Special to your heart that they're in places now. You were telling me a little bit uh, before the break about how you know, some have gone on to do amazing things. Yeah, I mean, this is a dance studio for children. For, so they start like they're five or six, and they stay with the with the studio or the dance company until they graduate from high school. Right. So women who played Clara, you know, that were twelve or thirteen at the time, now they have children, and. I forget names because it's a long There's a lot of people. Like, it doesn't feel like 30 years because <laughs> it's it just, I don't know where the time is drawn. So right. yes, I mean, some have gone on to a dance career, some have gone on to be choreographers, um, you know, some have gone on to work in retail or in government, you know. Sure. You know, they do the dance while they're, they're children and then it then. sticks with some of them, for some it doesn't. Right, excellent. So now I'm not a, I'm not very good at being a mathematician, especially on the spot. But approximately, how many performances are we talking that you think you've clocked over the years? Well over a hundred. Well over a hundred performances. I mean, it's, That's it's incredible. Usually three, uh, three to four performances. It started out that it was only just Saturday and Sunday. And right. There was a few years that we were also doing it in Salem, New Jersey. So, okay. uh, I, you know, I, I could probably do the math and add them right. up. It's kind of scary. <laughs> it's a lot. It's a scary to think about it. That's incredible. So I do want to say, so this takes place at Mitchell Hall on the campus of University of Delaware is where it's at. Yes, and it's uh, next weekend, not this weekend. Yeah, December, it opens on December 3rd. And it's Friday night, December 3rd at 7, and Saturday at 2 and 7, and then Sunday at 2. Excellent. And uh, tickets can be found at the website, Delaware Dance Company, all spelled out, Delaware Dance Com Dance Company. Org. Excellent. So I want to get into one of your other hats that you wear. Um, the players so that's an organization that's close to my heart I've done a few performances there Most recent one was, uh, right, right before COVID started we had done we had done a play uh, a good friend of yours and a great director Judy uh, Judy David had directed that tell us a little bit about um, three players and coming back what it's like and what they have coming up well just to clarify I'm not the Oh, sorry. I'm in president. So sorry. I meant to say owner of the production company. The so many hats. Yeah, no. Um, Chapel Street reopened in September. So during COVID, during quarantine, we we pivoted like many uh, artistic organizations. So we did live stream and throughout the year, and we just did a show that was postponed from April of 2020. We just opened that in September, and a challenge. I mean, yeah. we have to, we require that people, our, our volunteers be vaccinated, sure. the audience wears a mask. One of the funniest things, if you can find humor in a pandemic, is because we were live streaming, the actors didn't have to learn lines. You know, stuff was sitting below our computer screen. <laughs> and and now, and I, uh, it was actually Judy, because she's in the show coming up, and she said, you know, I've got to learn lines again. So we've gotten spoiled by, world, by right? having, yeah. you know, teleprompter or right, right in front of us. Uh, but we have uh, a great show for the holiday, yeah. perfect timing for your intro, the, uh, the Christmas uh, Carol, sure. and it's a radio play version that opens on December 10th, and then coming up in 2022, uh, 2021, no, 2022. So you're right, oh yeah. Oh my God. I know. 
It's hard to believe. Yeah. 2022. Uh, we have play on. We have come back to the five and nine, Jimmy Dean, Jimmy Dean, and the Putnam Spelling Bee. So yeah, it's so an fun. exciting season, and yeah. people are coming. Yes. I think people are tired of being at home, and uh, they want to get out. So it, it's been exciting to be back. No, listen, I attended the first production you had back, Moon Over the Brewery, and um, I was happy but ex you know i was surprised but ecstatic at the same time to see how many seats were filled it just goes to show that people are, are hungry for this they're hungry for theater to come back and i was just ecstatic to see that so many of the seats were filled because you didn't know what to expect are people afraid or are they not and it, it was packed. everyone wore their masks but um, i was so happy to see people back and just smiling and happy to be back to me in the theater yeah they were so generous of spirit you know they when we do a curtain speech at the beginning of the show and uh, the director said, you know, hey, we're back, you know, we're live on stage and people were applauding. And and I think, that it, you know, it's, it's community theater and it's a sense of community. And we were very we were well supported with generous donors during our live stream and and stayed, you know, in the black, even though, you know, our doors were closed. So it's, it's a great community. Newark's great. And uh, it's a great place to go see a show. Can we talk a little, bit, a little bit about the radio play that's coming up? When is that happening? And that's something interesting that um, this is sort of the same director, correct me if I'm wrong, Brian has done for a number of years now. And the radio play has kind of become like a staple holiday tradition at Chapel Street. Um, not, not so much a staple. I mean, it, it, it's, it depends on timing and who okay. proposes what. But yeah, I mean, he's done a few. And it's just, it's neat because it's like watching, you know, watching people perform in front of a fake microphone and you know acting like they're in a in a radio studio and it's sort of a peek into that time period when that everything was on the radio yeah. yeah and it opens december 10th and plays through the 18th okay yeah that's great i went uh two years ago i guess i keep wanting to say last year for everything but right. everything was not two years ago and it's just fantastic to see you know uh, you know, people who are growing up now, millennials and things, don't know what it was like back then to hear radio plays. So to be able to see that is, uh, is exciting to, to see that as well. For sure. So your other hat that you are here, there's so many hats here. Um, your own, and the owner, and that's where the owner came from yeah. <laughs> earlier, of effervescent, effervescent, effervescent Productions, um, your own production company. Tell us a little bit about that, what you have going on. Well, it's sort of a, because I do have so many hats, whether I'm acting or, or playing Drossel Meyer or impersonating Dame Edna or Christmas decorating or doing workshops or teaching acting. Because I have so many different hats, I decided after I retired from the University of Delaware, I, I lumped everything together in my own company so I could you know, market it more effective and, and, and be a, a, you know, on social media. And so it's, it's a little bit of everything. I mean, basically it's, it's creativity. And, and if I'm not creating something, whether it be a character or a piece of art, I, then I'm bored to tears. And I, creativity just stimulates me, and so I like to share it with other people. I love that. I love that. As a, you know, as someone who's, you know, very well known in the community, especially the theater community here in Delaware, when COVID happened, and now that we're hopefully, knock on wood, you know, past the hardest part of the pandemic, what do you think it's like for people to be able to come back into the theater? Obviously, I said that, you know, when I went to Chapel Street's first production back, it was a packed house. Do you think people were hungry for it? They missed it? What's your feelings on that? Well, for certain. I, I think, again, watching so many arts organizations pivot during COVID, and many were doing live streams or, or just approaching their art form in a different way. I think it forced artists to, to rethink their product, whether it's theater or, or visual arts or dance. And so artists at heart, I hate to use the word again, are creative. And I think it, it made people grow sure. as artists and with those challenges. And then I think the audiences appreciate it. When you don't have something, you know, because they try to keep sports going, you know, so sports enthusiasts had something to watch, right. but it was hard to keep live theater, live dance, uh, you know, going. Sure. And so I think people missed it. I think people missed that shared did. experience of sitting in a space, be it a concert or what have you. And, and then, and doing so, so getting out of the house is one thing, but, but I also feel that people, they missed it. They missed you take things for granted right. until you don't have them. Absolutely. You know, like Absolutely. green bean casserole. <laughs> right, until you don't have it, until it ends up on the worst uh, side dish right. list. So, right, right. Listen, Scott, I want to thank you so much for your time. I hope you'll come back. I know you have a lot going on. I hope you'll come back and share more with us. One more time, where can we find tickets for the Nutcracker? The tickets for the Nutcracker at Delaware, spelled out, Dance Company, Delaware Dance Company, all one phrase, dot 
Awesome. awesome. Be sure to check Scott out there. Next.